three walkthroughs for 5x5 five five using the Yao method. I don't need to do an intro, let's just get to it. So I've been using Yao, switching from Yao 5 for like a couple months now and I'm now pretty comfortable with the method, so I'm gonna try and share some ideas I found with it at least. Um, so for this first center, it seems like yellow is probably the easiest. It's got this block here, this S shape. The S shape isn't particularly useful. Uh, what we're gonna do instead is we're going to make a two, like a square out of this and then put this in. And then this corner is going to stay around here, and then I know the last two pieces are around here, so I will rotate over here in a sec. So the start would look like this, knowing this is there I can do that. And I can start setting things up, so I would do like a D move while rotating, and then... I didn't take into account that the yellow piece would move, but that's okay, I can just move here, do that to pair them up, and then luckily it's the good case where I can just bang them in like that. Luckily we've got a line on top, like so. And then the first pieces I see are just like this pile here, so I'd probably, I'd probably pair those up and then just... I'd, pro I'd preserve this pair if I was being smart, maybe not, but we'll do it now. Put that in like so. These two here, so just D to get that there, and then put it in. As I'm doing this, I see a bunch of white cross edges, namely these two, so this is what I will start with. The greens. I don't... Oh, okay, so I see the other green down there. I'm not going to change anything about these two, I'll just... Line them up like that, and then put this one in like so. As I'm doing that, I see the oranges over here. I don't see the other one, so I'll just kind of start pairing them up. As I go down here, I notice that it's actually it's actually over there where my thumb is. So I would have to do a D to bring it in the right just orientation, do that. And because I know orange goes before green, I have to put it up there. And I see red, red, red. So this is a pretty nice case. Um, just because of the orientation of the corners, instead of doing, instead of pairing these up and then doing U prime R2 to bring this back, I know because this edge is going to have white on top or white over here in a sec, I want to do a U2 instead. So I would do it like this, and then I have like this case, and I can F prime that. And then because I do the last cross edge before centers, I would see these two here, and then eventually I would see this in the back. If I was being smart, which I wasn't, but we'll pretend I am because it's an example solve, I would do this, and then wang, wang bang this one in, <laughs> like that. Uh, and then I want to look for some sort of easy line. Uh, blue looks pretty manageable, and I do like to align it with the center I'm doing, or the edge I've just done here. So I'll probably go down, I see this here, do like you 2 and then like bring these two up, like so. Da da da. And I knew there was an edge on the back there somewhere, I think, so I can make a line out of the middle pieces just by uh yeah so it's up there and i can use this one here and then i've got the two by three like so and then i'd see this one here and then those two down there if i was being super smart i mean i, I probably wouldn't be able to execute it from this angle i would realistically do something like that but i'll just show you the smart thing so this for this for this since these two are if this was like up here this wouldn't be as efficient basically because I can do U2, slice, U2, and then slice like that. That's just like a bit of a recognition tidbit that you'd want to implement. Um, and then we'd move on to... Oh, we got some stuff on... I'd probably start doing a bit of green, honestly. Um, I don't know if that's necessary... Nah, we'll, we'll be smart. We'll do orange. I would probably do orange. So just middle line like that. And then we've got a bit of action going on on green, but we're going to ignore it for now because I think it'll kind of self-manage a bit. These two and this one here, I could do this, bring it down, you two, like that. And then by this point, it's probably a good idea to start working on green. You don't really want to get ahead of yourself. Um, so I'd probably just bring that up like that and then check the situation with these. Um, I think because I'm at this angle, I would actually do an alternate setup for these. Although it's actually, it is less efficient. Um, so yeah, fuck it, we won't do that. I was thinking I might do that and then pair up, but it is still better to do U2 and then that, because then we can do R to U2 instead of having to cancel into R to U2, which is, if you just track the other way, it would be more moves. And also I can do wide R2 to preserve this pair, which will give me a better last two centers like that. And then insert the edge like that, and then bang that one in. Uh, we got white blue, um, I do have to do two inserts, but because I see all the pieces, I think it is worth it here. So I would do that, insert that, insert this one here, 
do the slice, and then I would see the uh, blue and reds. So I'd rotate over here, do you two to set these up, which I know will actually set these up as well, which is nice. So I do that, insert that, then I can do a U2. And then here I see these uh I see these yellow greens, but I don't really see the other piece, so I'd rotate over here and I'd see it's in the back there. So it's this one over here. So I need to do a hedge slammer to put this one in. As I'm doing that, I would see I wouldn't really see a whole lot. Honestly, the first thing I would see is probably the uh, blue and orange, just because one piece is over here, one piece is over here. So I can head to this one in without really having much regard for where the last one is. And it's back over here. Here I'm going to do a little bit of a fancy trick and try and... Because I've only got this one slice here, and it's the same slice that corresponds to where the edge needs to go. And I can also potentially set this up. This is something I would do in a real solve. I'm not actually bullshitting. This is... I don't think this is terribly difficult to see. So I would, instead of doing flip U2, I would do U, flip, U, and then try and get the orange-yellow edge there, which is up here. So I can do this, I can do a hedge slammer, and then I can do a U, and then I've already got my two edges set up here, so I can just rotate here and move on to the last, uh, in this case, last three edges. And here it's a pretty easy case, we just have a three cycle, but I'm going to get parity at the end. Just got to solve this, pretending it's a real edge, and then hedge slammer this one in, and then I can do parity. And then boring 3x3 three three stage, nothing nothing to see here. You can barely see through the camera to begin with. Really difficult last layer case as well. Alright, so that's solve one. Solve number two. Uh, I'd probably go for orange here, because it's a 3 move 1x2x3. By by th 3 move 2 by 3 sorry, and then I know none of the moves I do are actually going to affect anything on left and right, and I know this is a case I can deal with pretty well, so I would do... I'd get this in position so that this R move doesn't mess up the block, and then I can R2 prime it down like that. If I'm going too fast for people, just set the video speed to like 0.75 or something, or just like rewatch. And then here we have these two and then this one. I want to have, so, if this, if this center was like, well this center is like this here, they're like kind of mirrored, this is in the bottom left corner, this is in the bottom left corner. If one's in the bottom left, we want one in the top left when we have this edge over here, so we can do that, and then just rotate and wham bam, thank you ma'am. Uh, I would probably, I would probably just put this line in just from the get go, um, and then probably this edge like that. It would have been smarter to just do these two first with slice moves, which is a bit awkward anyway. And then, now that we have a T-shape, we can do this. And then finishing the center here is pretty easy. We've got this one, this one, and this one. We can do like a DRU. And then here, in general, I usually just go with whatever color's on top for my cross because that's usually just what I'm looking for because my brain's just naturally filtering for that color to begin with. And I see these greens here, I'd rotate around down to here, and then I eventually see the edge over here, and I also see the blue, so I may be able to do something with that. And sure enough, as I'm solving it, I can see another blue piece here, and then also one down here. So I'll do like an L prime, and then I can just get these in one at a time, so like that, down, down, set these up, and then I can do like a bit of a slicey trick. And while I'm doing that, I'm seeing some both white and yellow action, so we'll just kind of see what happens. Uh, here I would probably just go off the white because that's just kind of what's obvious to me at the moment. So these two here, one, two, three, four, has, the edge hasn't appeared, now it's over here. And then just slice it in like that, and it needs to go there. Last cross edge, we've got to rotate up here. We've got two up here and one down here, once again just kind of do one at a time type thing. So I get this one in, get that one in, and then we have a line up here we can already attach it to, which is really nice. So I would do this, and knowing that it was white, um, I can just go right ahead and deal with uh, this little bit of mess over here and make a middle line like that. And then as I've done that, I would see this and this, and then looking down to confirm this is in a good position because these, are, these aren't both in the bottom left or in the top left. One is in the bottom left, one's in top left, so I can use this type of trick. And then I've got the center and bottom. Uh, I don't really see much for green, I'd probably... 
I rotate down, I see like this, and I just immediately know, okay, just do that. That's how you get the line on bottom. And then doing that also preserves this line so I can put that on the left like that. And then we have this case here. Not really going to do anything fancy with yellow, I don't think it's really worth it from this angle when we can just finish green really quickly. I generally like finishing um, the next center when I'm like already in position to do so, where I can just do stuff like that, or even like set up the line. But since I'm already here, I'll probably just do these three like so. Here, whenever you have this weird shape, no matter what, even if you get the wrong, um, the wrong piece in like that, you can do like an M slice trick to um, still get the 2 by 3 equally as efficiently just having to use a slice move instead of just fat R's. But I would just immediately default to that and surely enough I did get the T which happens most of the time. I also notice that I want to put this edge in because this will force a 3 move last 2 centers. So I don't want to do this. I don't want to put this in. God no. Nor do I want to do that. What I want to do is I want to do it like so, and then I have a 3 mover to finish. Put the cross edge in, L2, and immediately I see all these orange and whites. So let's just... Okay, let's not do that. What I'll probably do is i probably hedge this in first, and then hedge this one back. As I'm doing that, I'm kind of noticing this uh, blue-yellow edge. And the reason I'm noticing that is because after I finish this hedge, this part of the center will solve itself, and then I can go right into that, and then I can set all of these up quite easily. I kind of like to track centers during the free slice edges, because if I can get two edges solved and get my centers solved really efficiently, it is kind of nice to just do that and then try like YOLO chain pairing the rest. I think that's an efficiency in Meow that will be useful eventually, but for now we'll just go into blue and yellow like so. Here I would see green Green and yellow is pretty easy, so we'll just do that. These two, these two. Hedge that in. As I'm doing that, I notice the uh, white greens, but nothing's really happening with them, and we can just do this instead. So we've got the blue whites, like so. Slice that over, flip, bring that over, and then I could do the five mover trick of R U prime, R to U prime R, but what I might do instead, just because I see a pair, is actually just solve it. And so I would just solve it in the back, get some work done, and then while I'm at it, just insert a random edge here. And then I can rotate over to do my chain pairing. Here I would obviously want to work with the orange and blue. Here's the other one, like so. And then before I slice, there's two pieces I want to take note of, the orange and yellow and the uh, green and white. Those are the two pieces I'm likely to pair it with, and surely enough, in this case, I'll be doing the green and white, like that. Also, just so happens to pair the orange and yellow, but I did not note that whatsoever. So I'll be focusing on this, therefore I'll be inserting this edge with a hedge. And then, I know I'm going to get parity, which kind of sucks, but whatever. So hedge that in. And then here, I want to set this up to a case I know, so I would take that out, do an F, and then do my parity alg, and then 3x3 three three stage, which is not interesting whatsoever. Totally worth it to do IUDZB on big cubes, I promise. All right, last scramble. Da, 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 da. I'd pro oh, yeah, I think white's probably the go here. Blue isn't bad. Actually, I might do blue just for fun. Why not? Um. So I wanna I wanna make the two by three out of these pieces here. So I want to make a fish shape out of these and then pull the edge in. But I also want to set up a bit of a block out of this stuff here. And I don't want to... So I'm going to do a U'R to start like that. But I want to bring up a corner that comes up over here, like this. But I also don't want to set up this case. So what I would do is I would do this, then I'd do U2, and then set that up like so. Which sets this up nicely later. Then I put this in to make the 2x3. Rotate here, and then because I see this L shape, I can just keep it for free like that. Got this line. Instead of doing a U, I would do a U prime because I want to kick this edge out. Rotate, and then I see one, two, three. I would do just U prime to get these ready to go, and then fat R, R2. Here I see a blue edge, so this is a rare case where I would probably rotate down to blue instead. So, da 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 da. 
And then, surely enough, it's right here. This is pretty easy. Da 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 da. See some whites. Probably get those ready to be in position. And then, surely enough, the other one is here. So, you pair these up, you two, and then finesse it with the slice. And then, we got a bit of red blue action here. So, I could bring this one down to pair these up. And then, this blue edge, the red blue edge, has made it self apparent to me. So, I can pair it up like that, put it in. And this is really difficult, I promise. It's not. It's not. I'm lying to you. And then for the line, I saw a bunch of stuff on white so I'd probably just work with that for now. So I get this just on the right side for the time being. And then make a line out of these three. Um, making sure not to mess this edge up. Da 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 da. Because there's a line back there, we can do an R move again. I wouldn't be smart enough to try and preserve this, but as it turns out, me being dumb works better. So, we can do a U, camera focus please. Fail our U, and then L2 slice, which is annoying, but it puts us in the right position, and it's more efficient than like, like that. <laughs> All right, so red center, got this action going on. We can set up another fish like this. And then because I know this edge isn't gonna go anywhere, I can just, Use my look ahead, think ahead, whatever you want to call it, to get that going. Uh, because I see a block here, I'd probably start setting up the next center. I don't think it's necessarily a good idea. It's just how I roll. And then I would deal with this case, so like that. And then I think I want to do this. The way I want to do this is by using this pair here, because I feel like doing this doesn't set up a great case. This is just going off like gut feeling, I would want to do something like that. And then this last two center case, um, either do it like this, or like this, doesn't really matter. And then just for whatever reason, I have noticed I can do R prime U2 instead of like that, which is silly. Um, I don't recommend trying to solve on the like, center that will set this case up on purpose, just because I feel like that's kind of... Camera! Behave! But yeah, I don't think that's like a worthwhile efficiency to really explore, it was just kind of a nice thing that set itself up. First thing I see, orange and green, Christmas edge. Over here we just do some slice, flip, slice. Since this doesn't really affect centers, I may be on the lookout for some sort of... way to just... do a couple edges and then move into a bit of... freestyle edge pairing action. Uh, next thing I would see is probably these green and yellows, so I'd just wham bam. And then the last one is over here. It was in front of me, I don't know why I looked everywhere else first. And then just put this in the back like that. And then I see the, the yellow and orange, so I would do like this. Last one is in the back over there, um, so I just flip this edge. And then here, so this is a case where I would uh, finish my edge pairing a little bit preemptively because I can set up this case, these two here, and then get my center solved. So I would just, and this is like the first thing I saw anyway. Um, I probably should have seen this instead, but we'll just do this to show like an example of what I mean. So I can do that. And then I would go ahead and just like get two edges solved like so. So set them up here, do that, and then we can do some yellow edge pairing. So. First thing I'd see is the green and orange is here, like that, and then I can bang in the white and red over here. And then here I would I would do slice pairing. Um, it's probably more efficient to do like a setup to MU to M prime, but this is how I'd probably do it. So insert like this, um, get the orange and whites ready to go, and then set these up. Hope I don't get parity. I got parity. It's okay. We'll just do three by three stage with parity. This is an F2 edge though, so I want to deal with it sooner rather than later. Um, and then yeah, this insert will kick it out because swag, and then parity, and then the rest of the solve is relatively boring from here. I shouldn't use this up on big cubes, but I don't know any better because I'm silly. Well, I do know better, but I, I don't practice enough to implement. Thanks for watching.